So staying on the uh, staying on the topic of really fueling and nutrition, um, a question coming in from Kimberly here. What what are your biggest fueling and nutrition concerns? And 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 taking sort of building on that, what do you take extra care to either take in or avoid? So when you think about your nu- nutrition and fueling, what are the sort of the big barriers or concerns that you have? I think the biggest barriers for race nutrition are making sure you don't take in too much or too little. So I found with me personally, um, I know when 200 calories per hour in a race is too little and 300 is too much. So I stick right in the belly of 250. And that seems to work for my body type and how I work as an athlete. Everyone's so individualized. So my biggest advice for that is to practice what you do in races in your training and I know out here at camp I've been trying to practice new things with all the training we're doing here and that's really helped me to think wow okay this might settle in a race Um, and that's going to be really helpful going forward I think. One of the hardest things for me is staying on top of my electrolyte uh, consumption and I've found it kind of easy to to figure out the calories I need the 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 fluids I need to take in but um, depending on the conditions, I feel like electrolytes could be anywhere. Uh, and, you know, I've come up with a basic formula for what I need per hour, but I also like to take extra with me on the bike. Um, so if it is a day that's hot or hum- more humid, um, I'm prepared when I get on my bike uh, and I have it all with me. So I don't have to worry about trying to, to find it someplace out on the race course. Um, you know, basically when, I, when I'm out on the course, I'm already prepared. I have everything I need if the situation comes up. Um, you know, for me, one of the things I really focus on is uh, trying to eat right after a, a workout, and particularly after a big session, trying to, you know, get some carbohydrates and protein in me because it makes a huge difference in terms of how you recover. And also... I would say within my training, if I'm doing a big swim set and I know I have a big run, for example, um, you know, at some other point in the day, eating within um, that first training session makes a big difference for me in terms of how I recover from that first session and how my next session in terms of performance, how it's going to go. So um, keeping those things in mind and, and kind of, even though you might feel great in the first session of the day, if you're not eating and you know you have another big session, it, it will really impact it. And then you know, making sure, you know, to maximize your recovery to eat afterwards. It's, it's something I put a lot of emphasis on. I think as a, as a washed up old pro that, uh, um, but maybe a, a little bit of a guide, I think that a critical component that I like to drive home is by creating uh, a, a proper protocol around your workouts and fueling properly during and immediately following workouts, it frees athletes up, these guys up in the evening to to have a highly nutritious and sort of what I call a building block dinner. So being able to not have cravings for the pizza and the pastas and the starchy carbohydrates, instead really getting good building blocks, getting a high quality protein, a fish or a a, a lean meat, and and supported with all of the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals that come through plenty of vegetables and plenty of fruits and things like that. And that to me is a high quality meal that you can only get to if you've done a great series of habits in and around your workouts and really fueled properly. And I think that that's a, a really big focus for us uh, and, and something that we really try and nail on every day.